Hi, it's Tricia from East Marsh Acres and uh, today I'm going to be making magic water. Now if you're wondering what magic water is, it's uh, when you first get chicks. So we're getting 30 meat chicks in today to do another batch of meat chickens and uh, so we're getting them as day old chicks and uh, so when you get them you give them this this uh, fortified water basically um, at the in the first 24 hours so uh, you'll be seeing the process when I get them later this afternoon but for now I'm making this water so um, <clears throat> so here's my little lab here um, so it's it's got all in, all natural ingredients and so on but it basically um, so to fill up one of these juice containers so here in Canada is 1.89 liters um, the recipe is for 16 cups of water so this is about eight cups of water which is what goes in one of these and you have two cloves of um, well in the in the eight cups you have one clove of garlic you have one tablespoon of apple cider vinegar and you'll have a quarter cup of raw honey which this is so that's probably about an eighth of a cup and I got one one more scoop so this will give them some um, yeah help them with their immune system and the honey for energy and so on in their first little bit of life so when we pick them up from the um, feed store <clears throat> they've been alive for about a day and they have not had anything to drink or to eat which is typical so um, this will be their first drink um, I have no idea what their taste buds are like but um, honey and garlic yeah, not bad <laughs> apple cider vinegar so we got a sweet and sour mix here for them but um, yeah we've had luck with our other chickens we haven't lost any chicks this like at the beginning whether it's because of this or whatever um, I don't know but um, so I'm making um, two jars of this so the whole recipe is basically 16 cups of water two tablespoons of apple cider vinegar two cloves of garlic um, crushed and <clears throat> um, a quarter cup, no, a half a cup of honey. So a quarter cup in. So here we got some residual garlic and honey in the jar here. Okay. So this is all set for me to put into their waters this afternoon. So I'm picking them up around two o'clock. It's uh, almost 11 now and uh, so that garlic I'll have time to to um, <coughs> percolate through the water as well so be with me now yeah I'll uh, catch you up later when we pick up the chicks for now you can see this is what I'm doing as well is we've got tomatoes from the garden so you can see that they're starting to crack so how I process my tomatoes, um, maybe I'll show you that. Um, I chop them up and I, I um, basically I roast them in the oven for about 30 minutes and then I let them cool, drain off the water and then I put a mixer through it. So it's pretty easy, pretty fast. So um, I'm going to be getting a batch in right now. <clears throat> so let's remove all this garlic stuff here and uh, And 
wet here. Um, so excuse my sniffles, I am getting over COVID, so I've had it for about a week, I'm now testing negative, so I'm starting to feel a lot better, um, however this cold symptoms, nasal congestion, is lasting a little bit longer. Let me see how you're set up to look at me here. Okay, good. <clears throat> I don't know if my head's getting cut off, but um, I'll pull you back a bit. And up a bit. There we go. Okay, so... Here's my big tray. Got some parchment paper on there. And basically I um, doing two different um, so I'm cutting out the the center stem and that one I'm keeping for a compost because our chickens can't have this the stems of the tomatoes so I'm generally gonna I'm gonna cut down that that um, <coughs> crack and I'm gonna cut off that portion <coughs> and the rest will go on the tray here um, So they are getting pretty soft, but they're for sauce anyways, so I don't need them to be hardened. But I just lay them across the, um, the tray. Uh, I put them in the oven for at about 400 degrees. Um, I do con convection bake, so it's at 375 convection bake, and so then the it is all around. Put the... So this one's not too bad. You cut off the top, cut off the bottom, and <clears throat> so I leave the skins on because the skins actually have a lot of nutrients in them and when you end up you know pulverizing them anyways um, you're not going to know the difference that there's tomato skins in there okay this one's got a little bit of rot So not too much goes to waste because it will go to the chickens. Just gonna cut around this one. Very mushy. So if you're wondering, can chickens have tomatoes? They love tomatoes. However, they cannot have the stems of tomatoes. I guess that is the normal part of the um, tomatoes. 
for for chickens. So I don't like to give them any of the middle middle part. This is a pretty fast way of dealing with these rather than like dipping them in water and taking the skins off and different things like that. I tried this yesterday and I, I had a, 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 t um, a mill before where I, yeah, you didn't take the, you didn't take the skins off, um, but you you cut it up like I did and then you milled it through. But I still found that there was so much um, juice and that that was wasted and I don't know, it just, this is just a faster way of doing it. It's less work on my part. I don't have to set up a mill and set up the And then there's juice all over your counter, and I just I just find this is so much easier. And yeah, you can. Probably this is my fourth big bowl of tomatoes and there's probably another one or two that are ready yet again in there. Now these types of tomatoes, I don't know if you see, they're nice and meaty. They're red and they're they're called Paul Robesons. They are a heritage brand of tomatoes. <clears throat> Only could find three? No, there's four. So one, <clears throat> one in the box. Okay. Uh, two under the thistles. And the one that's eaten was in the coop. It was in the coop still, eh? Yes. Oh. So four, so far. All that, all that, uh, chocolate <laughs> for four eggs. <laughs> okay. So our chickens are not being very good girls and laying all over the place and we're trying to train them. We've got new nesting boxes and that roll away because they eat eggs and so it's very frustrating when you got to go on an Easter egg hunt every day and, uh, and then from 13 chickens you get three or four eggs a day. Carrots are nice though. Oh, mm -hmm. So Roland just came from the garden and so he just was checking on our carrots and these are our, some of the carrots that are coming. So that'll be ready and well, we, we can take our time taking them out of the garden. They can stay in, under the ground for a little bit. And those uh, carrots are all long carrots. Yeah. In our garden we've got tons of voluntary cherry tomatoes that come up, seem to be coming up every year. They're in our our soil and so since we don't like do a do a deep dig, um, like the no-dig gardening. Okay so now I have cut up all the tomatoes here on the tray and I've salt and peppered and garlicked um, all of these. So now they will go into the oven 
Now you can put fresh garlic in there too and let that roast as well and then when you when you chop it all up with the um, hand blender um, you'll have some garlic in there as well too but I just use some garlic um, uh, powder so anyways that's going into the oven for 30 minutes So Trisha's pulling the chicks <coughs> out of the car, just pick them up, and there's all the feed, etc. So I'll have to uh, take all of that out of the So we pick up the box at the uh, feed store, and uh, they're bought to the feed store from the hatchery and they look like cute little chicks at this stage. this stage. Okay and now I'm going to take them out, count them and dip their beaks in the magic water that I made this morning and so that they know where the water is and uh, get some sustenance. Get them started. One of the black. One's starting to drink okay. already. Fifteen on one side. <laughs> See how many of these last. Okay, 
So they've got what they've been introduced to the water. And some of them know where the heat is already. The heat's under there, so we have a heat heat plate there basically. It is for chickens. So we put them up so they can go under it and they can perch under it or whatever like that. They have a tendency to congregate, congregate in corners together. and corners until they figure things out. Some have figured out the water. Which is good. Oh, look at this one. Drinking away. Mm-hmm. So there's one with two black spots. Mm -hmm. There's another one, the last one was had some black on it too, that one. Yeah. Oh, they seem a lot more active than the other ones did. But anyways, we gotta get the feed out. Oh, oh, there you go. There you go. What's wrong with that? That one's a little. Oh, here. Mm -hmm. Okay, I'm doing okay now. We don't need that. But, oh, I don't, yeah. Well, nothing else. Just... It's so cute now. You didn't have enough grit in our lives? No, we don't have the small grit. Not gritty? Yeah, out of it. So is this chick feed or is it next? It's a uh, chick starter. So all, all of it of can it. all of it can go into this stuff of here. The layer stuff's in the Once Rowan gets all this feed out, I'll open a bag and um, still testing positive. Yeah, I figured you might. <coughs> Only what got it when Wednesday, Tuesday. Hmm? You got a timer on for Yeah, for the, the test, but it showed up almost immediately. Yeah. Um. <coughs> Because it should be full, Walsy. 
Что тогда принять? Let's see if they need to figure out what to do with it. <clears throat> so I show them where the water is, but I don't show them where the food is. So I have to see. Still testing out their legs. Some of them are kind of wobbly. Maybe got it. Well, <clears throat> well it's more coming. The one with the black dot certainly has the drinking down. Yeah. We use the one that went second, or she, he or she. So, <clears throat> these are not sex, so there could be boys, there could be girls. Mm -hmm. But it doesn't matter for the meat they're chickens, because they never or? matured to what they're going to be. So. Well, you're talking to the camera, were you? Yes, I am. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> talking to those that do not know uh, about chicks yet. So these are the meat birds that will stay around for how long do they stay in the brooder? Um, they'll probably be in here for three weeks. And um, yeah, and then they'll go out to the go out to the chick what did we call it? The meat meat? Chicken tractor. Chicken tractor. Um, so that's about the twenty first of September or so? Yeah. And then they'll be out there for how long? Till the end of October, 23rd or 24th of October, something like that. So it's about just over four weeks. Yeah, there'll be seven and a half weeks. That's the date that we chose. Um, we found last time. Now they they may not get as big as fast because of the weather. Because it may be cooler, so they'll be trying to cool themselves. Or keep I mean, themselves keep warm. themselves warm. However, um, I mean, we do get warm September, so we'll see. <clears throat> but last time, they were eight and a half weeks, and they were way, they were too big. Like we even we even um, pushed up the date a week. Like they were going to be nine and a half weeks, and we said, no way, they're going to be way too big. So most of our chickens ended up being in in uh, net weight, um, six Just to over nine seven pounds, pounds. Yeah. you know. So seven and a half pounds being the average. So that's kind of that's kind of big for for them. We like them to be probably five or six pounds. So. However, the uh the meat on the birds that we had in the first round really is just good. Yeah. really good. Yeah. Nice and juicy and uh, it's firm. The birds themselves don't look all that pretty. Well, they're cute now. Yeah. <coughs> Three once, weeks are okay. Once they lose their fluff. Yeah, once they get their feathers and stuff and they're... We don't, well, the other ones didn't get feathers on their bones. They didn't their bones. Oh, a loud sound? 
some loud sounds, so you guys have figured out some of you. Wondering if we can put this connection to back there rather than having to walk over it all the time. Yeah, I, would, I didn't I didn't see that one over there. So Well I think this one would be even better, but I can't get to it. Yeah, that one by the pipes. Okay. I kind of want to put the chairs over it. Move it out up and you can see the chicks. What's going on here, Alves? What's going on? Yeah. What are these? What are these? Huh? Mm, more chicks. Well, I don't see any that are <clears throat> really lethargic or um, having a hard time. They, they look pretty good. Some are bigger than others. They're all fairly active at this point. Yeah. It, it's gone. Okay. Yeah, there's some that are kind of sitting underneath it. And there's room around it in the back if they get too warm and then they can come out this way. Um, but at first we have to keep them pretty warm. At night we'll cover them up with a <clears throat> comforter that will go over top of here. And uh, so no drafts and so on. <laughs> this one drinking yeah. so uh, far back. Yeah. Almost looks like she's going to fall over. Yeah. Well, it's kind of sitting on underneath her. Kind of sitting underneath her. Yeah. Looking for water from the sky? Yeah. Hey, Alex, did you see the chips? You see the chicks? Come here. Come here. Can you see over? Yeah, you can see over. Can you see the chicks? Okay. Okay, shall we? Yeah, there's a bunch underneath there now. <coughs> So we'll figure out the food. I think they've all figured out the water. Come back in a couple hours and check on them.